Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Steam Deck Review It's not ready both of these things are true. First, I'm having more fun with the Steam Deck than any gadget I've tested in years. Second, the Steam Deck is a mess. It's rushed, unfinished, buggy, and unstable. If Valve sold the console I've been playing at Best Buy or GameStop, people would return it in droves. Of course, Valve isn't stocking this $400 handheld gaming PC at Best Buy. The maker of Half-Life and Portal is trickling it out directly to devout fans of Steam, the platform that pioneered the idea of selling early access games before they're actually complete. Remember when Valve let an unknown developer sell a broken, buggy game called Player Unknown's Battlegrounds in early access? It changed the world. The bugs didn't outweigh the fact that its unproven formula was uniquely fun, to the point that PUBG, its clones, and the games it inspired, including Fortnite, Call of Duty, Warzone, and Apex Legends, rank among the most popular titles around the globe. The Steam Deck has a unique formula too. It's a Linux computer that plays Windows games like a Nintendo Switch with unheard of bang for the buck. And just like PUBG, a game I played for 452 hours despite glitches, I can't get enough. Welcome to the early access game console. There will be bugs. Let's get one thing out of the way, it's easy to look at pictures of the Steam Deck, see a Nintendo Switch, and imagine yourself magically playing a gigantic library of PC games that just work without messing with graphic settings or controls. That's not the Steam Deck that exists today, and not just because the Steam Deck is an absolute chonk that can practically fit a switch between its grips. It reminded me a little of Darth Vader's Star Destroyer swallowing Princess Liar's Tantive 4. No, today's Steam Deck expects you to tweak more and forgive more than your average PC, not less. But for me, the magic of Steam Deck is this, it makes PC gaming truly portable for the first time ever. 7-inch, 60Hz, 1280x800 IPS screen with 400 nit brightness 4 core. 8 thread AMD Zen 2 CPU 8 core AMD DNA 2 graphics, 1 GB video memory 16 GB LPDDR5 memory, 8 GB accessible by GPU 64 GB eMMC storage, $400, 256 GB NVMe SSD, $530, or 512 GB NVMe SSD, $650, 40WH battery USB-C port with USB 3.2 Gen 2 data, display port 1.4 video out, USB-C PD charging dual band Wi-Fi 5, 2x2, Bluetooth 5.0, as I micro SD reader 3.5mm headphone jack what do I mean? Last year, I borrowed a then state-of-the-art AR Neo handheld gaming PC and managed to play through Persona 4 Golden on that $800 and up Windows machine. But it never quite felt like PC gaming to me. I could barely navigate the OS with its joysticks and touchscreen, there wasn't enough performance to competently play even moderately demanding games like Outer Wilds and Valheim, there were no precision controls for shooting or point-and-click titles and there was no point in bothering with anything but the lowest graphical settings. There was also no way to quickly and reliably suspend the system without losing progress. The Steam Deck turns all that on its head. Starting at just $400, its custom AMD chip with a DNA2 graphics instantly outstrips every boutique portable gaming PC on the market. While you might still struggle with the very latest titles, it's got enough oomph that I'm playing Control and the Resident Evil 2 remake at a smooth 60 frames per second outside of big fights, and I can even turn the graphics up if I'm willing to accept 30 FPS instead. Older or less demanding games can easily run on their highest settings, like Max Payne 3 or Mirror's Edge. And if the game you're playing really doesn't need the juice, say Hotline Miami or Nidhogg, you can throttle the frame rate, GPU clock speed, or even the processor wattage to prolong the deck's battery life. It only takes three taps, and the awesome open-source Mango HUD overlay gives you instant feedback on your frame rate, clock speeds, 
frame times, even how quickly you're draining the battery and how long it's likely to last. Okay, you might ask, but all the games are just named have gamepad support, what about the decades of mouse and keyboard fare? The Steam Deck lets you borrow or build a dizzying array of custom control schemes that make them feel at home, too. In addition to providing an entire traditional gamepad worth of analog joysticks, triggers, and face buttons, almost all of which feel fantastic, I might add, you also get four rear grip buttons and a pair of Steam controller pads so customizable, calling them track pads feels like a disservice. You can click, swipe, flick, and spin a virtual trackball. Press down on their pressure-sensitive surfaces. And even set their edges to continually move or turn your character. And every one of the decks 20 plus programmable.